Hey everybody, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you get anything from my work, I connect the dot. A new book to read, a new author to explore. Please consider supporting my work. All the links will be in the drop box below. Hi spiritual soul advice i haven't done one of these in a long time and i'm sorry i have not been posting i've been onion dated with overwhelming hellfire spiritually attacked just trying to get the house in order it is coming but slowly and it's super slow for me and I don't like it, but I don't have an option. Um, I've been building lots and lots and lots of furniture, a lot of furniture. And when I say build, it's not like I'm taking the wood and go cutting it in the backyard. I order it and then I have to put it together. I finally undone a beanbag that's going to be my meditation lay down spot down here i got my some of my gems out of storage i built some end tables to put my things on so that i can meditate and have a nice space carved out for myself right literally there um i have like a little cubicle office space and then it's open space um, when I am done with everything and it all looks spectacular, I will take, a, I'll make a video and make a tour out of what I've been doing. So all of you understand like how ridiculous this is. I also had appliances not show up when they were supposed to not installed properly or not installed at all. I'm waiting still on an oven, still eating microwaved shit. I'm not happy about that. Um, still haven't really got to venture around much here in the nice state of Indiana. But enough about all that nonsense. I just want to catch you guys up on my journey, where it's been, what's been going on. It's overwhelming. A lot of energy. I'm trying to anchor the energy here at the house. Just get my energy right because... I'm going to try to see if you can see that. I found some of my Oracle cards. Yay. I also built last night a five-tier um, bookshelf because, yeah, you see all the chaos behind here. Like, I was in my meditation room when I did at the old house, my video, so I didn't see the clutter everywhere so it wasn't upset and overwhelmed and not to say that i live a clean like everything has to have a spot like organized like that i like my house to be lived in but this is overwhelming it's too much for my mind and i it, it bothers me and it makes me upset so anywho the topic of our spiritual soul advice today is actually what I've been getting downloads on. Ashiana or Ashana Dean. The Voyagers 1 and 2 books, which I've skimmed. It's a lot of heavy reading. But recently on the Voyagers YouTube channel, and there's another, there's a few of them that are out. Uh, one in particular has, I think, Korean subtitles. It's in Korean and then English and subtitles. Been coming out with her seminars and her circle roundtables and her talks. I, okay. I've been getting a dump load of downloads. It's another reason why I have not been on too, because I am just inundated with information from upstairs it's a lot um and now what do i mean by that 
when I listen to her and her frequency, when I'm listening to the information that she's giving out, a lot of connecting the dots starts making me connect more of my dots. I've read her stuff, skimmed it. It didn't hit me. Like everything has its perfect and right timing. It's divine, I call it divine timing. We all have divine timing when certain things are just not meant to be read. Like you pick a book up and it's like, it's not connecting to you, but maybe in six months, it's, oh, uh, maybe you pick it up again to see if you can start reading it. And now all of a sudden, everything starts making sense. Things connect. Books have a habit of doing that. And so, so does information. Sometimes it's not for your ears at the time that you receive it, but you have it. This is what happened with the Voyager stuff. My journey with her, which I'm dying to get into contact with her, if she's still alive, and I'm sure she is, is over the Stargate that happened to be at my house location. Um, yeah, so she had this map that I saw the map, but I didn't see the coordinates until I got someone gave me the copy of the book or I found it somewhere. I found it somewhere. And when I put the coordinates that was under the uh, Trinity Stargate 4, Staten Island, New York, and the coordinates, it was my house. So that's when I started making connections to her. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So we, why, why, why? Oh, my goodness sakes. Sorry, guys. New desktop. Not going to work today. We'll figure it out for another time. But anyway, it's, it's a star map. Trinity gate map that links to, and I showed it in one of the other videos that I've done with the proof that it's my house uh for some reason i didn't set up something and it won't share screen so i do apologize um but listening to her really start getting into factions and understanding why and what is going on and the agendas that are playing out right now in our political economical spiritual realms it's all starting to make sense carrie cassidy applaud her up and down if you don't know who that is go look it up project camelot she actually did an interview with ashiana dean a very long time ago and it's golden it's the information that comes out of that and I don't even think that Carrie's making the connections and maybe she is and just being quiet about it. But the letter she just put out to what we call the White Hats is excellent. Because there's a lot of agendas happening and a lot of factions happening. She goes over these factions of the Draco, of the Anunnaki, of the false Phantom Matrix, the Jehovian line, the Illuminati line. The Greys, Thoth, Enoch, and there's all genetic lines to each of these, okay? And that's not to say that if you are reptilian in whatever form that you might be, because guess what? We were everything, good, bad, and the ugly, before we incarnated in human bodies and here. And as I'm looking at my eyes in the screen, I don't like what I'm seeing. But even if I'm one of them, okay, I'm of the light. I'm of source. That's what I chose. That's the contract that I chose 
with source. And most of us that listen to me are probably in the same tribe or in the same arena of being the people that are going to carry the rest of humanity into the transition. The problem is there's a lot of people that listen to a lot of people, right? With information. If you watch her stuff objectively and just listen to it to understand her perception where she's getting her channeling from, it's the guardians. Now, why is Space Force called the Guardians? What are they really fighting over? What are they not telling? Why are they continuously not sharing certain things that should be more public? Yeah, I'm not asking you to divulge the cog. I'm not asking you to divulge serious information that would harm other people or operations are continuously going. Why would we want to do that? It's beyond me, we don't. But there's certain truths that have resonated with me that have not been coming out. Why? Because it's seriously, they're warring over the planet, but the galaxy. We're a gateway. I mean, we're a huge experiment anyway. We're a matrix in a simulation, in a holographic simulation. We chose to come here, just like, think of the movie Matrix. We chose to come here to unravel it. What faction are certain people under? I get a huge download about Kimberly Ann Gogan and her information's spot on, but she's not giving you the big, the big picture about what line she belongs to because she talks about Marduk the Anunnaki negative polarized line people wrap messages up in shiny bows on a huge present that looks so good you want to open it it feels great but then there's a lot of disappointment inside that box and I want people to understand you might resonate with that information and that's fine because you probably are of her line. It's what intentions do you bring to the table that is going to get you to the Christos? We, everybody here has the opportunity to ascend. Everybody. So law of one. If you are a positive, intended being, putting out love, light, positive intentions, doing for others, doing the best that you can as a physical human being, you're going to ascend. Doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter because we all signed up for these assignments. We all are contracted for these assignments. Yeah, there are people that say you can undo your soul contract, but some people cannot. I'm in an ironclad, ironclad soul contract. There's some of us that have those. Okay, not saying that I could say, oh, well, in stupid human stuff, can I undo that contract? Maybe I might, but my mission here is solid and I can't undo it. I need to complete it. And many of you are probably in that same light, so don't worry. Her information is starting to bring out with what Carrie Cassidy's talking about the AI. And I always had this uh, thing against technology. I don't like it. I'm old school. I was raised in the 80s, but I have a very ancient soul. I don't subscribe to where we're going when it comes to, and I, I don't mind the quantum stuff, but at the same time, artificial intelligence, have we not been told by them the whoever made Terminator, who's ever making Mobius, Umbrella, Corp. There's multi-dimensions. And in some of these timelines are very nefarious things that have been injecting itself into our timeline, into the dominion of what they want, they want Earth. 
yeah, we want med beds. We want replicators. We want these things to help us evolve. But at what extent is it sentient that they get to determine what moves are made next because they're playing 5D chess? Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. But if a sentient AI turns onto the negative polarity, which I feel it, most of them have, and there's more than one AI dictating things, you're playing war games and having predictive outcomes. Well, what happens when a human thought is faster than light and is trying to manifest a better situation for all of us? We manifest our realities. If that's correct, then why is AI dictating a percentage of when things come out to the public? We are of God. Is it God? Are we making a God out of an AI? Because if it's going to read my mind and tell me how much money I have in my account and what I can and cannot use, or that I can't manifest a relationship, or I can't manifest a better world for all of us, because the quantum is now dictating what, what my intention is. I don't like that. That's acting as God. We only have one. So there is a lot of concern. Carrie brings a lot of that information out, but so does Ashiana Dean or Ashana. I don't know how she likes to have her name pronounced. Um, and she's been saying it for a very long time. She's been talking about these factions for a very long time. And now for me, listening to each person that I listen to on podcasts, I get to now start seeing what faction they probably belong to. And not to say that they're working directly with them, but they're very highly influenced by their DNA, by their activations. You could see the motive starting to come out now. And not to say that, they are bad intentions, right? But again, you can you can spew really good stuff to people and have a really good heart. So if I'm trying to read somebody and see if their intentions are in the right place, probably are. But is the agenda for the best of the highest of all humanity? That's the problem that I'm having. That's what I've been sifting through. That's what I've been sitting and pondering as I'm building and doing the house and doing my, you know, this is all very overwhelming. My energy is chaotic and static all over the place lately. But when I'm doing what I do best is my creative side is, you know, putting things up and hanging stuff and putting the books out. That's my happy place. I, I listen to her and I just start making a lot of connections and getting a lot of channeling. Um, and it's resonating with me. So I wanted to put this out there for people. Um, whether you listen to the political, economical stuff, it's affecting you. I mean, someone sent me a picture from New York about how eggs are $9 for a dozen, not two dozen, a dozen. I I went to the local Target here because I haven't gone to a regular supermarket yet or to a farmer's market because it's been brutally cold. I'm also getting a lot of deliveries I have to be home for. So I haven't really been able to get out. out. I go to Home Depot. I go to Target because they just have everything in one spot. So their eggs are seven dollars but i saw a brand for three but mind you there's an agenda behind that there's an agenda to all of this so whether you are ignorantly not focused on why things are so expensive right now it's still affecting your life it's affecting the quality of your life what faction is trying to mess that up It, these are good things to ask. When you're listening to a podcaster, what agenda are they trying to preach? Are they going about the technology, the AI? Are they focused on getting us 
ready for maybe doom gloom. I mean, there's another agenda out there that I just want to bring to an attention to people who are patriots. Maybe not. You don't need to be a patriot to listen to me. And it doesn't matter what country you listen to me from. But this is something I think is very important to hone in on. America has been under the largest MK Ultra Saya known to man. It is worse than North Korea. Because our propaganda is nothing but lies. All lies. And even when you listen to Ashana or Ashiana, she tells you that everything has been inverted. But way before way, 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 way before they tell you everything's been inverted. It was way before that. The timelines, the shifting, the in and outs, things were supposed to happen in 2012. Figure what happened with CERN, figure what's been happening, because I even know back in 2012, I was just awakening to the political stuff. I always knew as a child all of them are installed and it's a shadow shit. Someone else is pulling the puppet strings where it's still evident now. And I didn't want to boggle my mind with any of that. I was always the spiritual alien galactic person. When a people with the best intentions trying to make sure that you're okay, but it's still fear Anxious, it's nervous, anxious, spaced. When they tell you to start hoarding food, toilet paper, should you be stocked with stuff? Absolutely. No doubt about it. But there are a lot of people that cannot afford that. But think about how many people are not awake. There are a hell of a lot more people that are not awake to everything. They, they have chunks of information. Most people on the spiritual side are just wakening up to the starseed stuff, to the different books, to the different modalities. Everybody is now becoming a guru. Everybody now is becoming something that, guess what? We're all gurus. Mentors and stuff. Be very weary of people coming out of the woodwork. My whole thing is that should be free. Yes, we all have to work to make money because we still live in a 3D matrix. We still live in that. We still need money to survive. I get it. I don't like it. I don't subscribe to it. And a lot of people are like, well, you live in lack mindset. It's a deadly sin. I live more up there than I do down here. It's just the way it is. And I've always lived in a survival mode because I'm continuously getting attacked. Even when I'm shielding, grounding, meditating, feng shui. They're after us. They're after the light beings. Don't fall for the anxiety. Don't fall for the fear. People are going to tell you, oh, the EBS. People are going to tell you, oh, well, the military said stock up. Yeah, have have food and have enough that you're going to eat for a good two weeks. But if you don't have the money and that's not in your capability, don't freak out over it and don't even pay it mind because that's going to lower your frequency. These are the things that lower people's frequencies because anxiety and being nervous and anxious over what might or may come is an anxiety. It causes stress to certain people. And most people subscribe to that stress because, oh my God, someone made an email. Oh my God, somebody put this information out. Oh my God, I got to go run to the store. And you might not have the affordability to get the food that you need or the supplies that you need. I lived that a year in two months. Being told every week there's something that's going to happen and it never happened. I was eating once a day to make sure that if something did happen, I had food. That's not a way to live. And that's not a way to be giving your energy away to 
the evil things that suck and eat your energy. That's what they do. They siphon your energy. That's how they do it. Fear comes in many different forms. It doesn't necessarily just come from being scared. It's anxiety. It's nervousness. We need to get out of that vibration. We need to get out of that mind frame. And the only way to do that is, yeah, common sense. No matter where you are in the world, make sure, if you can, get enough stock of what you need to survive. Plain and simple. But if you can't do that, because trust me, I was there community make sure you start reaching out to people and you don't have to have a political or a religious alliance to anything if you have something of value that you can barter for something else do it work as a community amish mindset applies now more than ever to a lot of things and a lot of people are still in their selfishness i hear it all the time i'm watching i'm observing i'm taking a step back from a lot of things right now because i have my own health to to convey and put my life back together and it's taking forever by the way for my own being my my own standards Amish mindset. I'm listening and observing all these people and the agendas that they're starting to try to put forward. I'm not resonating with them. I'm listening. I'm listening to all the talks. There's a huge amount of talks, and some of them are a long hour, two, three hours. Not everything starts resonating me with at me at once. When I get her information, I have to disseminate what is filtering through and what's starting to pop into my frequency to understand it. Not everybody's going to re resonate with her work, but objectively listen to the key points about the factions because I believe they're absolutely correct. They're warring over wormholes stargates and portals ley lines axle tonal lines there's no accident i had a draco pop up in one of my pictures for halloween in two years ago no accident who was trying to get that stargate the dracos the omnicron dracos to be exact because there's not just one race of reptilian and not all of them are bad. The ones that inhabit inner earth are, they're aggressive. Just leave them alone. Just like any animal. Not saying they're animals, but just, you know. Hey, what's up? Respect. You stay over there. I stay over here. We're cool, right? Yep. Perfect. That's, that's what they want. The ones in the inner earth. They just want to be left alone. Cool. And some of them come up to talk to people. They're not going to eat you. Why? Because they just want to, you know, they want to study us. They just want to know what we're intending. And, you know, we still live in a country where it's in America for some month. We shoot first and ask questions later. Unless you're mentally gone and... You're doing the wrong thing by the law. There's a lot playing out in our society right now. And I'm starting to see these people that come and talk about what faction they belong to, whether it be white hat, Illuminati, this and that and the other thing. But it's all different factions. They all have different DNA lines. And each DNA line has a different agenda attached to its line. And then there's the Emerald Covenant. 
There's also two, there's a Melchizedek line and the cloister of Melchizedek line. One is false from the Phantom Matrix, if I'm getting that correct, and the other is the right one, which I believe I'm a part of. Because I'm like, oh, Mickey, I resonate with this. But at the same time, yeah, I know there's a false one too. There's a Enochian line. Enoch. She claims that he turned because he had no choice. The Jehovian line, which we talk about in Awaspe, and even she talks about the Arantia book too. All false phantom matrix stuff. Not to say it's not, it didn't happen. It happened, but it's under the false pretense. That's why a lot of people like, you know, when I read certain books, people think that I am subscribing to the faith or that I believe in everything that's in those books. And I do, and I want to put that out there. I'm reading it objectively to get the information out there because I think it's very important to know from all angles, all sides, all the information, whether it be right or wrong, there is truth in a lot of things, but it's you have to dissect it out and pluck it out. Satanists have to tell you the truth. And that's nothing, again, I know plenty of Satanists too. I used to. Again, it's where your intentions lie and everybody's entitled to their own beliefs. That's the experience that you chose to come into in this life. I chose to be a spiritual person and not be guided by religion this lifetime. Other people come in and they need to have an, a, a religious experience. We have to remember to accept and stop judging others for their choice of where their soul growth needed to be. That's really where a lot of people now struggle in understanding and disseminating information because they they still stuck on ideals that they're indoctrinated with as kids. Not to say that's bad indoctrination. It's good to have faith. It's good to have something to follow. Some people chose not to have anything to follow, but themselves. And that's not a service to self. That's a service to God. So I just want to come in and say, I really feel that everybody really needs to start listening to her information. I think it's vital right now because you're starting to see who's really pushing the AI, who's talking about it a lot more. There's nefarious things that are happening that we're not aware of because they don't put the information out. Because again, things that are not spoken that is not an operation or a military op that would blow up the security of our humanity should be spoken into truth, into words, out into the ether. When it's not and it's just being hidden, there's an agenda behind it. Is it a good agenda or a bad agenda? I would say bad agenda because if it was good, you would tell everybody. Or there's something nefarious behind it. Or there's greed or something tied to it that is not good. When everybody's focused on money, 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 that's all that comes out of your mouth is money, 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 money. That's a problem for me. Yes, we need it to survive. I get that. Great. I get it. But that's most people's focus in this world. I'm all about energy exchange. That that doesn't need to be in a financial form. And if it does, great. You know, but I like working. I like building. I like being physical, even though it hurts and sucks. My body sometimes, that's just me. But I think it's really, really important to look at the body of work, the factions she talks about, understanding what they're warring over, like what really are they fighting? Why hasn't things been disseminated yet? Very, very interesting to know that I had to close the Stargate 
the one in Staten Island because I was moving and I didn't want what I was holding back my entire life, the demonics, the things coming out of the void of space, other dimensional beings that are not good. And then we're good things coming out of it too. But at the same time, it's too much of a risk. Me having a, a frequency key to a Stargate and leaving it open is irresponsible. The next person who inhabits that house that has the key frequency to open it up will in due time. I had to go because I believe that's a Stargate that was under attack. And that would have destroyed me. Here, I'm just still anchoring my energy and I'm still planting my energy here, gritting myself all over the place in the house, walking and saging his sage, um, putting my gems out, feeling where things should be, moving about. It's too cold to be walking my property right now. So 15 degrees, I think, feeling like five. Um, which I don't mind the cold, but it's icy. So not safe for me to be outside. I think it's very important that we all start really understanding the different factions, the different entities, how they're using people. Some people aren't even aware that things are projecting out of them. There is a lot of demonic energy moving through right now. I feel it. I know I've been attacked the last couple of days and they're using other people to come through to try to piss me off. And I'm not going to bring energy, but they're doing things to try to ruin connections trying to put me in a lower frequency so they can actually try it physically, which I anchoring everything, sending my guides all around the property. But a lot of people don't know how to protect themselves or use the shielding or use different types of, you know, shielding techniques. Everybody resonates with different things, right? Same thing with her information. Her information might not sync with you now, but objectively read her work or listen to the, the videos because it is my, for me, nothing but downloads and nothing but mind blowing information. And it's not because I didn't read her stuff. I skimmed it. It's dense. It's, it really is like the law of one, which I will get back into my insights on. But it's like that. It's like very heavy. It's a lot. It's it's a lot of information and you have to break it down. The Keys of Enoch is the same way. I've read that. It took me five months to read that book and disseminate it. And I, I would have to read it over and over and over and over again to start piecing together what, what makes sense to me and disseminate it in the time that it needs to be disseminated in. Everything has, it again, like I said in the beginning, everything has its own divine timing. And when you personally need the activation to start seeing things playing out, for me, I needed to get this out because I think more and more people are starting to resonate with her work and her words and understanding the different factions and the different I, agendas, whether it sounds great, but there's something nefarious behind it and no one can put a finger on it, but it's there. Carrie Cassidy writes it out for as plain as day for a lot of people about why isn't things starting to happen? You know, yes, things are happening behind the scenes. Optically, if you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, you hear it, you see it, you get the comms. But normal people, everyday normal people, who are sleeping and that's again their co contract with god but still 
even those just now awakening, we all awaken in our own time frame. They're being led to slaughter because they're not aware of the agendas. Who's running the agendas? Who's a, who's in alliance with the with each other? Are the Greys still enslaved by the Draco? Are the Draco signing an Enlil com Covenant contract? Are they joining the Templars? Are they joining, you know, is the Greys, the, the tall Greys in another faction that we're not aware of? What about the Palladians? Everybody's like, oh, Palladians, Palladians, but the divide between Enki and Enlil is the same agenda, just two different factions. And as much as I, I I respect the people that do that work and talk about the seed races and stuff, if you really look and hear over that and, and understand Ashana's stuff, then you're like, that's an agenda right there. Do the Anunnaki, are the Anunnaki for us? Well, I don't know. The stuff that Ashiana put out is from early 2000s. A little earlier than that in some instances. We don't know. But she's on alignment with a lot of what Dolores Cannon says and the law of one. So there's alignments there. She aligns with them. There's other books she 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 tries to incorporate, but it's it's again the false matrix. It's of the false phantom matrix. There's false matrices that we have entered that is a part of our reality. These things really did occur. The mythical gods that everybody talks about really did happen. But was it in the right timeline, in the right dimensional space, in the right matrix space? Or did we all play that out? under a false pretense. That's another subscription that we have to look at too. Where was our soul frequenting? Where was our bodies during all of this? Were we a part of what matrix? I don't think it matters at this point because we're here. But it's very interesting and very eye-opening to understand where we were. Because we don't want the past to repeat. And we don't want, it, like the Granada Treaty, I don't care who who or what signed it. It's the, there were, oh, help us, help us. There was like, you know, emoting e e false emotions that had the right intentions. And people were like, oh, well, Project Serpo happens under false pretenses under under a false guise like oh pandora's bo pandora's box opened up we're thinking we're helping and and there's an exchange of something not the best but you know you negotiate and you do whatever and then like hellfire breaks loose right that's where we don't want to go again and that's what we're being tested into stopping just putting that one out there. So I think that needs to be addressed too. There's a lot that we all need to start taking into consideration when looking at the agendas that are playing out on this planet. We really have to start going within our own selves and understanding even if we are from these lines and even if we are from these families, even if we feel that that's something that doesn't subscribe to us, even if we are from those lines genetically in this lifetime, you don't have to subscribe to the evil shit. You move into the Christos energy that we all are. It's embracing it and going towards the path of good. But not just good for you, good for humanity. Good for the entirety, because we're all one and the same. We're both polarities. We're still in polarity. We did not shift into New Earth where it's just a positive polarity. Fourth density, fourth dimension, whatever. 
it still inhabits polarity. You still have a positive and a negative. The law of one, Dolores Cannon, says that a percentage of people are going to move into a negative polarized state, and that's the experience that they chose because that's their soul needed that experience to grow. It's of source. It's not bad. That's just the experience that people signed up for. They're going to go either incarnate into another body, into another planet, and experience those things that they need to experience in a negative polarized state. Most of us are going to the new earth consciously. We're going to create it. Manifesting. Not a freaking AI. We're going to bring it into an existence. Not an AI. The metaverse. False illusions. We have to bring this vibration into this new home hub and create positive environment. We can't do that if we continuously judge everything. We can't do that without looking at things from all perspectives and objectively looking at the bird's eye view. People don't tell you the factions they belong to. Unless they're telling you the truth and they tell you the truth. Where there are a lot of people who are still in secrecy, who don't show their faces, who give you information that may or may not be true, who want you to hang on to their words and trust them. Yeah, there are people that can't because they're still in operational form and they can't give their cover away. Get that, totally fine with that. But there's people that are ground crew who aren't doing missions, who's disseminating information, whose information, what faction's information, where's the bird's eye view? Are they the good Palladians, the bad Palladians, the good Syrians, the bad Syrians? Alpha Centaurians, the Andromedes, the Antares. There's a shit ton of systems that have both polarities at play, all biting for Earth. Some are in factions. Listen to what she has to say about the Galactic Federation. What side are they playing on? Just a, It's just a question. I'm not attacking them. If they're helping us, they're a part of the Guardians. If they're not helping us, what faction is helping us? You listen to different people that talk about these things, and they then they bring the Anunnaki's in, or they're bringing the Dracos in. Well, what faction are the Dracos? What faction of Enoch and Thoth? What faction of the Templars? What faction of the Illuminati? What faction of this one, that one, and the other? These higher density beings are way highly advanced than we are in thought. They can manipulate. They can put you to sleep. They can walk into your body and run your vehicle. There's a lot that we are not or some of us are aware of, but they're not telling you the mass. In mass, they're not telling you. There's God to skull technology. Isaac Happy talks about that. To push agendas. Sometimes you don't need that. You just need somebody to repeat the same story multiple times over and over and over and over and over again with the same messaging that you start believing it. We really need to go into her work a bit more. I'm still listening every day. I put one or two of her conferences on um, 
Sometimes I'm just not there to absorb it. But a lot of her stuff, I'm starting to really question everything. And I question her motives and I question her uh, her information. But I'm linked right in there with the Stargate. That's That's real. Because before I even got known her work, I was told there's a portal in my room. I saw things with my own eyes. Physically, Claire cognitively, Claire cog, Claire app, all the Claire's. I felt things. My mom saw things and she didn't believe in any of it. Things are coming out of that portal, which was the Stargate. way before I even know about the Voyager books and her work. And then I, it's in a book and on a map with the coordinates. No zero coincidence is right there. Her work is becoming, it's coming out now, I feel because it needs to be heard again. People are putting out her videos every day now. Why? Because it's seriously super important that we objectively look at it, listen to it, and understand where she's coming from. Understand the history. And it could be from her perspective. But it sounds more accurate than what other people have put out there. And again, it's not to say those people are wrong. It's the timeline that they're reading into. Any remote viewer can go in remote view a plethora of different timelines you just don't know which one's playing out for the highest good of a person or a situation time is fluid we are fluid everything is moving even if it looks solid it's still vibrating the seven hermetic principles still apply but even if top hermes did shift into something else nefarious, the principle still stands. We're just not getting the bird's eye view of the totality of those principles. We're only getting the basics. We're only getting what we can handle dimensionally. Density wise. We're not stupid beings. We've just been suppressed. The veil is lifting. The veil of forgetting is lifting. We're all starting to remember. We're all starting to connect dots. We're all in different places. We're all understanding fractals of ourselves. We're all starting to get, get the bigger picture. It's a lot. And it's very overwhelming. But if you have the time, she's she, it's on YouTube. Go listen to her stuff. Absorb it. Objectively listen to it. And you're going to start understanding. I would start with the origin videos. That's very helpful to understand because it it's her work is dense. It is not easy to follow. It's like it lived very much like the law of one. It's all over the place. The people who are, uh, I think the Korean channel does a very good job at kind of cutting, like getting to the point. So they chop her videos up and then like they put everything back together where it like the points are made of one topic. Um, I've been trying to find those. I posted on my personal Facebook page. So if you are on that, you're more than welcome to find me on Facebook. Um, and if I don't understand, I'm not living on, I, it looks like I'm on all the time, but I'm not, I leave it on to have it on, but, um, message me, say, Hey, I'm from YouTube. I watch your, your show and friend me. And then you could see what I've been doing. Um, what I've been building. I don't take pictures of everything just yet. My house is still crazy. There's shit everywhere. I still don't have an oven. 
I'm getting my refrigerator on the fourth. It's taking forever. And each day I keep getting more furniture to have to put together because I literally threw every, well, I donated a lot. I tried selling some. Like I'm starting literally from nothing. And there's still things in storage. I just had to pay another month of storage because I it's too, it's, it's either snowing, icy, and my car just can't handle the ice and the inclines and some of these roads. I'm, I'm like all over the place and I don't want to get killed. I didn't come this far to, to have my life wrecked again. So there are a lot of things still in storage. A lot of my books made it here, but a lot of my books are still in storage. I think I have at least three more totes full of books that I'm missing. I don't have all my Oracle cards either. Um, this little unit that I have is just for right now. Um, I'm trying to get the energy anchored into the house. Again, trying to put my personal touches in and put my energy in the in the best places possible where I'm frequenting, anchoring things in so that things cannot attack me. They're trying really hard to physically get at me. They're they're doing it through other people. They're projecting themselves through people. Um it is what it is. You know, and I'm also getting called to do grid work and my line work which I'm focusing on. It's a lot guys, it's a lot, but I, again, I'm really, I really apologize. I can't say that enough because I really do feel bad. I really love reading and putting the knowledge out there. And it's just been so hard for me to do. It's been aggravating and overwhelming in my space. And I don't wanna bring this energy to People, I don't want to project it out because it's not healthy and it's not what anybody deserves. N I don't deserve it either. Um, today, I had a package coming. I have more packages coming. I was supposed to go out to the UPS store because now I'm stuck with this Verizon bill that I have to pay. I have to send back the equipment, but I had other things happening, so I couldn't get out today. And I hope that tomorrow doesn't snow so I can get to the place I need to go because it's going to be like two degrees. I am not going and slipping on ice. So either way, here I am just putting some spiritual soul advice out. Please go watch those videos. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Take your time with it. It's just a recommendation that I have. I feel that it's very important that we start listening to her and connecting some dots on your own, seeing if it resonates with you or not. And again, it's not to say that the people that are, are projecting an agenda are wrong. It's just where their intentions are lying. You'll start seeing the factions starting to make sense. And it's not to say these people are bad. It's just to show you, are you really connecting to them in the right way is their agenda for the good of humanity they probably most people are very good but they don't realize they're being used or some of them do and they're just nefarious and they're wrapping things in shiny bows and putting things in great wrapping paper to make an illusion happen and then at the end you get the big fist with a finger hanging out of it saying well you looked at the shiny stuff but you didn't look on the inside and you just got duped but we can't get duped as a humanity again because we've already been duped and that was against our free will because only a few people decided that they were going to talk be the mouthpieces for all of us when it, collectively we would have probably said yes to a lot of those treaties and there's a lot of treaties that continuously continue to happen without our knowledge or our know-how. I don't think that's fair either. I think more humans need to be aware of the things that are happening in our, that 
people are saying, well, it's in our best interest. Well, how do you freaking know? We didn't say anything about it. We don't know about it. Our best interests, our humanitarian stuff should be given to us to disseminate. And we should make those things. We should know about the treaties. If not in a physical vehicle, in our soul contracts. So I'm going to leave that here. I've been ranting. I miss everybody very much. I thank you for continuing to support me and my channel. Please like, scare, like, share, and subscribe. I have enough content for new people, books and everything. A lot of people are been catch. I get emails once in a while. You're catching up on my work. So thank you so much for watching old episodes and catching up on some reading. I'm going to be hopefully doing more as the load kind of lessens off of me here. And I have more kind of breathing room where I'm not overwhelmed and I don't have my mind in seven different places because that's where I've been the last couple of days, uh, ciphering and sifting through paperwork, finding documents, putting furniture together, just getting attacked all the time from uh, outer forces, just like a lot of stuff happening. So I, I do apologize again. It's been like nine, 10 days already. I'm not proud of that. That's not how I like to act. But I don't want to be a sour post in front of you. So I hope all of you have an amazing rest of your week. I should be trying to get another book reading out today, tomorrow. Uh, it all depends upon what I can get done today. Sending each and every one of you love and light. Do your research. Ashiana Dean, Voyagers, books. I will see if I'm able to link one of the channels that I watch with the show. And then you can go explore um, in the description box below. I think it's very important that we start. Also, Carrie Cassidy on Project Camelot. Very informative. If you haven't seen her work, please. It's amazing. And until next time, guys, love, light, protection. Search for you. Amish mindset. What are you doing today to help another person? Continue to do that if you have. And I applaud those who continually be consistent with it. Bye, guys.